Hi everyone, it's Adam here, and welcome to Universal Studios Hollywood. Today, we're going on an adventure. You're going to want to stick around for this entire episode because we're going to go on the whole studio tour. We're going to visit amazing sets from films like Jaws, Back to the Future, War of the Worlds, King Kong, and even Fast and the Furious, which we don't count. So let's go on the Universal Studios tram tour. The studio tour. The highlight of Universal Studios Hollywood, I'd say. Look at this view. You can see the Warner Brothers lot down in the distance. There you go. Oh, an escalator. I've been worried I was not going to get to go on one again. Jazz, way too Hollywood. You way too Hollywood, girl. No. It's a tram. Bridesmaids, one of my favorites. Don't forget your glasses. All right, folks, go ahead, cross the street, please. Board the tram in front of you, watch your step, watch your head. My friends coming out of the Express or General Key, please sit all the way down towards car number four. Oh. Car number four. Hang on. Oh. I'm glad I just threw my back out. It's time for the studio tour. Everyone say hi, Francisco. Hi, Francisco. Nice way to follow directions. Everyone, my name is Peter. I'm going to be your guide today. So we lift the veil of secrecy on some of Hollywood's hottest filming locations. I need to make sure that you all have a pair of 3D glasses. If you don't have 3D glasses, just raise a hand. Oh, Great, right. everyone has 3D glasses. Anymore. This is when you need to know you don't need to wear those like, 3D glasses right now. You could if you want to. It's a free country. I'll definitely let you know when to put them on. Alright everyone, and we've got the oh, green yeah. light to go. Please make sure that you are all buckled in and ready to go. Safety is very important here on the Universal Tour. Right about now you're realizing that there are no belt buckles. But I love that you're following directions. I part you as a result. So like I said before, my name is Peter. I'm going to be your guide today, but I can't do this alone. Sitting here next to me is the one and only driver of the year, 2022 and 2023. Everyone, give it up for Marty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not quite, darling. Sure. Hello. Yes. Everybody should be sent to the Make sure that we are not. And you can see there in the past, Jimmy Fallon. This is not from a classic film from the 40s. This was filmed here on the lawn inside of a soundstage. A soundstage is a soundproof warehouse where they build sets for filming. That's not great. You're looking at the inside of a soundstage. There are monitors right now. If you would like to see the outside of the soundstage, you are in luck because we've just entered the front lot. We're going to be seeing a number of sound stages that are located here in the front lot. Uh, for example, over here to your left-hand side, stages 8 and 7 used to be home to Superstore. Then they were home to Saved by the Bell. Both of those shows are available for streaming on Peacock. Superstore. Now they're home to the show Bel Air, which is a Peacock original. And here are two of the stars. A number of companies have their offices over there on the left-hand side. Like Illumination Entertainment, which has brought you the Super Mario Brothers movie and Migration, which was in theaters uh, earlier this year. Uh, this building over here on your left is where they will have costume fittings, makeup tests, and table reads. So a table read is when the actors come together to read a script aloud in front of the writers and producers. One of the first shows sees that building was Will & Grace. And the stage of evil hospital. Just an ordinary tourist at the Midwest. Oh, me too. A part. Yes, sir. Sort of pencil concert. Who were the fighting Caucasians? <laughs> 
Now we've left the front lot behind, here we are in the back lot. This is where they sell a lot of the big stuff, specifically the first location that we're going to visit here in the back lot is known as the Metro Sets. Metro being short for Metropolitan. We're coming up to a commonly used street here, the Metro Sets, known as Brownstone Street. You probably recognize it from the movie Bruce Almighty. See it there on your monitors as well as on your right hand side. That's Brownstone Street. Looks a little bit different on screen, right? That's because they've added some fake trees and grass. That's all the result of the production design team. They're the ones in charge of researching an area and authentically bringing that area to life, or researching a time period and authentically bringing that time period to life. I have writer producer Bob Gale and Christopher Lloyd here to tell you more about this location, Courthouse Square. It was actually the back lot of the Courthouse Square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had scenes up there, the clock tower on that ledge. There was a ledge about that wide, and I was standing inside looking at the ledge, and I already had the vertigo, and I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> You may also recognize this location from the show Rutherford Falls, uh, which is available on Peacock. And take a look at some other great filming examples that took place in Courthouse Square. left courthouse square behind here we are in one of my favorite locations of the lot this is one of my favorites because it's back home for me home is new york that's where i was born and raised on the playgrounds is where i spend most of my days but i've got jimmy fallon here to talk to you about where we are at this moment new york street hey everyone welcome to new york i got my start right here in new york on saturday night live this is actually my old neighborhood what's got mugged over there an old woman tough lady this is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey! I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Hey, it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. right you can make it in the metro sets a number of tv productions that film there like ncis criminal minds house how i met your mother the mini project agents of shield american ninja warrior uh, brooklyn 99 hacks american auto and the new quantum leap are some great examples of shows that are filmed in the metro sets and right now we're getting ready to take a trip to skull island but first here's peter jackson it's the original King Kong that, that made me want to play it. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. And uh -oh. I wanted to become a film I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the picture. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, oh. you're sailing to the Lost Island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island. It was great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Kong, and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster, even though he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. 
The most important feature of a koala is eyes. Kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive. They're, they're, they're full of emotion. His eyes are like a window into his personality and his heart. He's had um, an enormous number of encounters with his foes, the T-Rexes and the various dinosaurs on Skull Island. So he's been beaten up, scarred, chewed up, spat out by these dinosaurs at various times. And he, he wears... Hi uh, everyone, please remain below. seated, hold on to your belongings, and welcome to Skull Island. how they can go back to Skull Island with all those dinosaurs, right? And I'm sure many of you are fans of dinosaurs. I'm sure many of you are fans of Jurassic World, right? Remember earlier when I promised you a celebrity? I wasn't allowed to tell you this at the load line or else it'd be pandemonium throughout the park. We have one of the stars from Jurassic World here today. Get ready to meet Chris Pratt. Scar coming up on the left-hand side. <laughs> your left hand side you're looking at picture cars 
Uh, picture cars, any car that shows up on screen. In many instances, these cars are just as famous as the actors and actresses who drove them. But what you may not know is that these aren't the only cars used during filming. They have multiples of the cars in case you might need to damage oh no, get or wreck a car during Wait, a stunt. Nope. Nope. And you can't talk about stunts without referencing the Fast and Furious franchise, right? because we're taking a trip to an island off of Costa Rica. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. We're going to be looking at some of the picture cars and props used in the earlier Jurassic Park movies. recognize the mobile lab over there on the left. That's the one that's dangling off the cliff in that harrowing scene with Julianne Moore and the dinosaurs in the Lost World. So that... Oh my gosh, everyone. I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you about the dinosaurs. You know, it's okay to look at Really, it's no! okay. Relax. There's a window right here. People can go inside and let it all. Yeah, no, thanks. Thank you so much for your concern. Thank you. It's very kind. Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. Thanks. Um, but seriously, you can't have Jurassic Park without dinosaurs, right? It's one of the most important elements. Equally as important in the Jurassic Park films, the weather played a large role. All that fog and mist did a lot to create the mood of those films. But how did they make all that fog and mist, seeing as all that was here, filmed right here in, uh, here in sunny LA? One of the ways that they make fog in movies is by pouring hot water over dry ice. Uh, they also have a machine uh, called the Fog Machine. It looks a lot like a lawnmower. They'll bring it on to set, uh, move it around, and it'll release mist. And those are two of the ways, for example, that they created all that fog and mist. And it's the scene that you're seeing on your monitors right now. So there's the mobile lab that we just drove by moments ago. This was actually filmed here at Universal using one of the parking structures. They held the lab up over the structure using a crane, and we're able to film accordingly. So all that fog and mist that you see there is fake. All that rain that you see there is fake too. Speaking of rain, anybody wake up today and say, man, it looks like it's going to rain? You did? Then you must be Nostradamus. Like you can tell the future? Because it's raining right now. This rain is the result of some sprinklers strategically placed at high points. They shoot the water up into the air. Then it comes back down naturally, creating the effect of rain. But that's it, right? It's just a little drizzle, nothing more? Wait, say it again, what? Okay, hold, hold on, hold on. Card 3, somebody look to the left. Everybody look to the left. There are some drains to take it all in, and it just gets recycled. I know what you're thinking, but relax. No water was harmed during the making of that effect. And if you want to know what it would look like on screen, remember the movie Big Fat Liar? Nobody remembers that movie. No, nobody. Lucky shot! It's a good one. 
want to see you mount up and get out of town while it's getting good. Alright. I'll see you again, though. Oh, you can't. Yeah. Oh! Now, this set that we're visiting right here is another comment filming location. It's known as Little Europe, and it's called Little Europe because with the use of various props and costumes, it can be made to look like any place oh, yeah. in that's for this is room too. There's the train to the bad place. You may also recognize this location from the hit show, The Good Place. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Hi there. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. And Little Europe also has a distinction of dating all the way back to the classic monster movies from early last century. Films like Frankenstein, Dracula, and The Mummy all shot many scenes in Little Europe. And the next stop on the tour... You know, drive by the town of Amity. Remember Amity from the Jaws movies? You'll see the billboard over there on your left, welcoming you to the town. Oh no! And then you'll see the town coming up over here on the right-hand side. The Great White Castle Park. The water is safe and clear. Love it! and you'll recognize the location we just passed as Cabot Cove. It's not uncommon for sets and locations to be used over and over again. 
Another example of that over here to the right, you'll see the Chicken Ranch, which is used in the best little whorehouse in Texas, as well as the yeah. shows like Madonna Boy. Do you think that might be available to And the original Quantum Leap. Leap. And now oh, we are turning into a neighborhood that many of you have been desperately yeah. wanting to see. This mess, this uh, set here is known as Colonial Street, but many of you probably recognize this location as Wisteria Lane. I'm sure you recognize many of these houses. That yellow house over there on the left was the original 1313 Mockingbird Lane. That, that, sorry, that's the one that's heavily featured on the show Never Have I Ever, which was written and executive produced uh, by Mindy Kaling. All four seasons are now available for streaming on Netflix. Bel Air has shot here intermittently over its first few seasons. Uh, fans of Superstore know that this is where they shot the last scene for the final episode of Superstore, right here in this very location. And if you enjoy the new Quantum Leap, which streams on Peacock along with the original series, then you'll recognize this location as it's shown up uh, on again and off again for the new Quantum Leap, which is filmed in variety, uh, various places here on the lot. And fans of the show Ted, which streams on Peacock, you'll see the house over there on your monitors right now, and then you'll see the house over there for the show Ted to your left-hand side. Because this is one of the locations that they use to film for Ted. Let the festivities begin. How many we got? Well, let's see. We got 20 cabins. Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? Oh, come on, Johnny. We're doing a public service here. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. So, those of you who've taken the tour before know that this is normally the point in the tour where we head on over to the War of the Worlds set. So that set is undergoing some renovation, which is why we're not going to be able to pass through it. But over oh, here to your left-hand side, you'll be able to catch a glimpse of the plane crash from Ooh. War of the Worlds. It's all designed around a vision that Stephen had. When we first began to sit down to talk about the war of the world, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? No. Because it's, it's just That's something really you don't see. And War of the Worlds is directed by Steven Spielberg. He's had a long collaborative history with Universal over the years. Another director who's had a successful relationship with Universal is Oscar Award winner Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible Jupiter's motion plane. and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Plane, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Jupiter Park. Over there, look into the winking well. Have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie, Kid Cheer. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Well, I do. A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live. Anyway. Behind this Hollywood fantasy, an old rush frontier town, lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of a beautiful hot spot. set down, uh, brought it over here to the Universal Lock. This might be more serious than I thought. What just happened? This is a secure line. Who are you? I'll tell you who I am, boy. 
I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. I'm the reason the boogeyman begs his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm the man in charge. The hell you are. Let me clue you in on two things, sweet cheeks. One, there's a high-value witness from the Federal Protection Program aboard your vehicle. And two, an international crime syndicate led by Owen Shaw is honing in on this vehicle to take that witness out. This man is moving fast enough. London, London, hook him up. Hit it! Yeah. Seeing a little song I made up when I was just five years old. It's called Tram Pastor. Oh no. We had a real good time together. But now the ride is done. We saw some crazy cool stuff. And we had a lot of fun. This tram has made its final stop. But don't be sad and blue. Cause there's still one more thing. But I'd like to say to you. And everyone, how about a big round of applause for the person who made this all possible, our driver, Marty. Marty. Yeah. He's going to be available momentarily for any photographs, autographs, or financial planning advice. Feel free to see him then. Enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of L.A. My name is Peter, and I've been brought to you by my parents. See everyone. Oh my gosh. Yo! What a treat. I hope you enjoyed coming with me on the tram tour here at Universal Studios Hollywood. If you liked this, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can see our full trip to Universal Studios in the very near future. So, remember, like, subscribe, and share. And until I see you next time, remember, keep it paranormal.